Hi guys, this is Johnny Bergen with another Chicago Blues guitar lesson. Some of you may recognize that tune, it's Woman Don't Lie by Luther Snake Boy Johnson, also called Luther Georgia Boy Johnson. Now this is probably the only lesson on YouTube about this wonderful guitar player. And uh, before I go any further, I'm going to clear up a couple of things. Uh, it's not Luther Guitar Jr. Johnson, who also played with Muddy Waters, and to make matters even more confusing, he also lived in Boston. They both lived in Boston. So this is Snake Boy. And there's another Luther Johnson who this is not. This is not Luther House Rocker Johnson. All great guitar players. Um, and his real name was Lucius Brinson. But uh, love this guy. And one more thing, I would love to thank Mark Evangelos, who has played on a couple of records by Luther Snake Boy Johnson. They call me the snake and get on down to the nitty gritty. Uh, great records, if you can find them. He's credited as Martin Frisco, which was the name that Luther called him. And uh, Mark has a band in Austin, Texas now. And he was very kind to discuss um, some bits about Luther Johnson's style. And it was great to talk to someone who actually played with him and saw him play and spent a lot of time with him. So thank you, Mark. So let's talk a bit about his, uh, his fingering. Don't hurt yourself. But uh, it seems like he used his th second finger everywhere, even here on the th three frets up. Let's say we're in B. We were doing Woman Don't Lie, right? So, which is, mm -hmm. and it's funny on that there's a great video of him playing this in France. And, and w when he plays it, he uses his third finger to play the chords. <laughs> And he goes up and down with his thumb. He's using his, uh, for all his own solo stuff, it seems like he used his fingers just. So he did this. Notice how there's a little tug up here. This, this sounds a little bit without expression. Put a little tug in there. His playing is very tart. It has a lot of tart and tense but when he when when he goes to do his solos it's all this whoa here we go i'm sure you're saying oh wait a minute slow down so i'll slow it down but let me just say his style is kind of like nothing you've ever heard before and everything you've heard before because it's very, none of these notes are really a radical or different. You know, and he's playing out of typical chords and he's using that magic Sam chord rather than the full ninth. You know, he uses, or just the ninth chord. So his chords are nothing really new. His notes, He, he doesn't do this. He does this. So does Frank King. So. He does this a lot. And then. Billy Flynn uses that phrase sour. You got to make the notes a little sour. Like, so you bend them a little flat and you tug them a little bit. Um, not just for Luther. Not just Luther Johnson, but anybody in, in serious blues players. It's kind of it's the way they put expression in it. So when you're doing that kind of bend there, instead of like this is kind of like the typical way, but the way he got. And notice it's all downs. He almost never goes up except when he's he might strum his chords like that. Kind of a Lurie Bell feeling, and then there's there's big John Lee Hooker, so it's a real percussive with the <laughs> with the chord. Let's do a bit of get on down to the nitty gritty. Martin Frisco is on this, by the way. So Here we go. 
I didn't always follow my advice because I'm really not used to just doing this. And it's kind of making a handicap to sound a little more rough and untutored. Because sometimes if you play it perfectly and effortlessly, there's no suspense in that. But when someone's really sweating, doing all downstrokes, and kind of, how do I say it? It's, it's not as precise and supported when you're using your second finger. You kind of have a, a looser vibrato that way, because I hear a difference. I just like playing it when you, when you want to sound a little more raw. So, because he was definitely raw. And the other thing that he, that he had that was really special was the Joan Lee Hooker influence. Um, the last record that he did is called Back on the Road Again, and it's pretty much just him solo. And then there's three songs with him, which is Johnny Shines. And uh, it just shows that mean, that mean right hand. He was just great at that kind of thing, an E and an A. And I do think if he had lived, he would have enjoyed the same kind of career that Luther Allison had, for example. Um, the stuff on Get Down to the Nitty Gritty, it's, it's kind of like he ended where Luther Allison's first record on Delmark started. And um, he was just plagued by poor health all his life. He didn't even make it to 40, which is just awful. And uh, just had tons of soul. The last thing I want to talk about, it, it's a really revealing uh, clip that Muddy Waters live in 1968, and he's playing with a pick there, but but the touch, it's got the warm touch to it because because of the because of his right hand, because that's your soul, it's your right hand. So when he does when he he's doing a, a slow blues with Muddy at the beginning, and it's this is a great video for looking at Luther's style because it's even louder than Muddy, and. Um, so after the turnaround, you know, you know, he'll go like that. And it's like he's playing the bass lines, but it's he's playing the bass lines the way Jack Myers would play the bass lines. It's like they're really unchained and it's it's like almost a deconstruction of the bass lines, you know, you know. It's very brooding, and um, it really added something. It, it put like a bit of the John Lee Hooker style in the muddy thing, so it was looser and it was less uh, less structured than his band became in later years. So it's well worth listening to, and hope you guys enjoyed this look. It's more of a chat about Luther Snake Boy Johnson or Luther Georgia Boy Johnson. I've been listening to him for the last three days. And I, I feel like I've sort of gotten to know him. <laughs> and uh, you can tell he definitely really wanted to make it. He was he's kind of a man of his time in a way. He was dressed like flamboyantly, kind of like in hippie clothes and doing songs about the hippies and everything. And uh, he really put it out there with a lot of force. It's just too bad about his, his poor health and his early death. So enjoy yourself. Thanks for watching. And do subscribe to my YouTube channel for weekly looks at the Blues Greats. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.